Why shouldn't I join the NSA? That's a tough one, but I'll give it a shot. So say I'm working at the NSA. And someone puts a code on my desk, something nobody else can break. Now maybe I decide to take a shot at it. Maybe I break it. Now I'm real happy with myself because I did my job and I did it well. But maybe that code was the location of some rebel army in North Africa or the Middle East. Once we had that location, we bombed the village where the rebels are hiding. Now 1,500 people that I never met, never had no problem with get killed. Now the politicians are saying sending the Marines to secure the area. Because they don't care. It's not their kid over there getting shot. Just like it wasn't them when they got there and never caught because they were pulling a tour in the National Guard. No. There'd be a kid from Saudi that takes shrapnel in the ass. And he comes back to find out that the plant he used to work for just got exported to the country he just came back from. And the guy who put the shrapnel on his ass, he took his job because he'll work for 15 cents a day and no bathroom breaks. Meanwhile, he realizes the only reason we were over there in the first place was that so we can install a government to sell us oil at a good price. And of course, the oil companies, they're using the skirmish over there to scare up domestic oil prices. Cute little ancillary benefit for them, but they ain't helping my buddy at 250 a gallon. Now they're taking their sweet time bringing their oil back. Maybe they even took the liberty of hiring an alcoholic skipper who likes to drink martinis and play slum with the icebergs. It's just a matter of time to expose one killing all the sea life in the North Atlantic. So now my buddy's out of work. He can't afford to drive. So he's walking to the fucking job interviews. Which sucks because the shrapnel on his ass is giving him chronic hemorrhoids. And meanwhile, he's starving because the only blue plate special they're selling is North Atlantic Scrap with Quaker State. So what did I think? I'm going out for something better. I figure, fuck it, why not? Why not just shoot my buddy, take his job, give it to his sworn enemy, hike up gas prices, bomb a village, club a baby seal, hit the hatchback, and join the National Guard. I took this Votech class in high school, woodworking. Took a lot of Votech classes, I mean, because they were just a big jerk off, but this one time I had this teacher, Mr. Pike, I guess he was like a Marine or something before he got old. It was a little hard of hearing. And it was my project for his class was to make this small wooden box, you know, like a, just like a box. So I figured I can get out of the way and cut classes for the rest of the semester and he can't flunk me as long as I, you know, made the thing. So I finished it in a couple of days. It looked pretty lame, but it worked for putting stuff in and whatnot. And by the time I brought it into Mr. Pike for my grade, he just kind of looked up at me and asked, is that the best you can do? And at first I thought, hell yeah, bitch, now give me a D so I can go blazing with my boys. But I don't know, maybe it was the way he said it, but he wasn't exactly saying it sucked. He was just asking me honestly, is, is that the best you can do? So, for some reason I thought, yeah man, I can do better. So, I started from scratch. I made another, and then another. By the end of the semester, by like box number five, I had built this thing. You should have seen it. it was Insane. I built it out of proving walnuts with inlaid zebra wood. I sat it for days till it was as smooth as glass. It was fitted with pegs, no screws. Then I rubbed out the wood with tongue oil so it was rich and dark. It even smelled good. And then you put your nose up to it and breathe. It was perfect. I, I gave it to my mom. Actually, uh, I didn't give the box to my mom. I, uh, I traded it for an ounce of weed. <laughs>